In this video, we're going to derive the push forward or Jacobian vector product rule for nonlinear system solving. Nonlinear system solving is the generalization of root finding to systems of nonlinear equations. We can think of it in the following way. So we have a function which takes a parameter vector theta or any kind of input and then the output of that function is implicitly prescribed by the solution to a nonlinear system of equations. And we can write that down in the following way that we solve an optimality criterion or a zero condition with a function g which depends on the value x as well as on the parameter vector or the input vector theta and this condition is equal to zero and we shall solve for x. So in other words the output of the function f is the roots of that parameterized function. Let's call the output to this x or vector x. This is a problem that typically arises in the solution to nonlinear partial differential equations like the Navier-Stokes equations, but you can also find it in deep equilibrium models, which are some recent trends in deep learning. The way we solve these equations are by a couple of algorithms and the most typically used one is the newton raphson scheme. So for instance, we do that by the newton raphson scheme and the newton raphson scheme is quite a complicated algorithm, but we don't want to delve into its details. So we just assume that this function works. And there are a couple of difficulties here. For instance, multiple roots or non-converging solvers, but we don't want to deal into, with that. We really assume here that this solution always converges. So let us write this down. We assume it always converges. Okay, let's look a little bit at the dimensionalities that are involved here. Let's say that the input to our function theta is a p-dimensional vector. The vector x shall be an n-dimensional vector. And the function g, therefore, is our optimality criterion, which maps from an n-dimensional space by a p-dimensional space to an n-dimensional space. And as a consequence, the wrapper function f, which we can see of as a wrapper to the newton raphson scheme, is a function which maps from the p-dimensional space to the n-dimensional space. So given an input theta, it will solve the root finding problem or the high dimensional root finding problem. Now we are interested in forward propagating tangent information. So we have this operation as part of a computational chain on which we want to apply forward mode automatic differentiation. And now we need to be able to propagate tangent information. So this is what we're going to derive. So the task is to forward propagate tangent information on the input and let's denote the input tangent with theta dot and that quantity is of the same shape as the original primal input so it will be another p-dimensional vector to the output and the output here will then be an x dot and this will be another n-dimensional vector. And an important remark here is we are interested in doing so without calling a forward mode AD engine through the numerical solver. So without forward mode automatic differentiation through the solver. And that's important, so through the solver. And by through the solver, I mean that we look at the iterative algorithm that the newton raphson scheme is. And this iterative algorithm is again composed of small computational operations which we could use our forward mode AD engine on. And that's not what we want to do. And typically you would call this, with, which we do not want to do, also unrolling, because you unroll the iterations of the solver. Or you could also call it piggybagging, because alongside the primal computation, you carry the tangent computation. However, it must be said, this is an alternative way of doing it. We could differentiate through the solver, but we have to be careful that sometimes this is not even possible because usually these numerical operations, they call into some low level library and often these libraries are not in the differentiable framework which we're using. So for instance, in Python, they might not be written in JAX or TensorFlow. So we have to provide this kind of custom propagation rule. Okay, so far so good. How do we do that? So the general push forward or Jacobian vector product rule is that we find the tangent on the output in that we take the function and derive it with respect to the input and then contract with the tangent on the input. 
And if we derive a vector valued function with respect to its vector valued argument, this is called the Jacobian. And since we are then multiplying the Jacobian with a vector, this is called the Jacobian vector product. And I have to be a little bit more precise here in that this df by d theta is evaluated at the primal solution. So more precisely, we would have to say that df by d theta is evaluated at theta being theta star. So really one concrete value for which we evaluated the algorithm. I would like to stress that because whenever we have automatic differentiation, we have to combine that with a primal evaluation. And that is because we first solved the forward problem, or you could also call it the primal problem. And this one was that we queried the function f at a really concrete value theta, and then got back a really concrete value of x. And as said, we assume that this one is converged. And let me quickly recall the dimensionality here. So this is a quantity which will be n by p dimensional. And then if we multiply an n by p dimensional quantity with a p dimensional vector, we will get an n dimensional quantity. And as such, we are again having the correct shape of the output tangent. So how do we do that? As said, if we would naively apply forward mode AD through the solver, this is exactly what our AD engine would give us. But now we want to find an alternative expression for this Jacobian vector product, and we will do so by the help of the total derivative of the optimality criterion. So what we will do is the total derivative of the optimality criterion. And what was the optimality criterion? This is basically the condition that has to be fulfilled for a solution to our root finding problem. And that is the function g here. So we will take the function g and by total derivative, I mean that we derive the function with respect to theta and resolve all the nested dependencies. The function g depends on x and theta explicitly, but since x is given in terms of this implicit function, it has a nested dependency on theta, because obviously if you change theta, x changes. So what we will get is the partial g with respect to partial x, and then partial x with respect to partial theta. And then we also get the explicit dependency, though partial g with respect to partial theta. And this quantity has to hold to the zero matrix. And that is because the optimality criterion is zero at a particular root. So if we plug in the x star and the theta star that we got from our primal pass, this of course has to be zero because otherwise we wouldn't have solved this nonlinear system. And if we now evaluate these derivatives hypothetically or these Jacobian matrices at that particular point, then the derivative also has to vanish because something that is zero everywhere will also have a zero derivative. What we find here is essentially the quantity that we are looking for because the derivative of x with respect to theta is essentially equal to the derivative of f with respect to theta because for a function like f we can associate it with its output. So the function f with respect to theta is equal to its output with respect to theta. And so we can rearrange for this quantity and by this we have to be careful that all the quantities here are matrices. So this one is a matrix, this one is a matrix and this one is also a matrix. So we will find that our dx by d theta Jacobian which we said is equivalent to df by d theta is given as minus and then the inverse of g with respect to x multiplied with the derivative of g with respect to theta. So now we have this quantity that we had in our Jacobian vector product. So we have found the full and dense Jacobian matrix. So we can plug this back in. So let's say plug back in and then we will get that the tangent on the output is given as minus and then dg with respect to dx in brackets inverse multiplied with dg by d theta multiplied with theta dot. And here we see that the propagation of tangent information from the input to the output requires us to solve a linear system of equations. And for this, I want to make this a little bit more verbose in that I define this quantity here as the vector d. 
And I say the vector d is given as the Jacobian of g with respect to theta multiplied with theta dot. And then we could also multiply with dg by dx from the left. And we see that this is equal to dg by dx times x dot is minus d. So this requires the solution to a linear system of equations. And let me write that down a little bit more uh, verbose. So in that sense, we can say that this one is equivalent that our cotangent on the output is given as the solution to now a linear system of equations with dg by dx times x dot is equal to minus d and this shall be solved for x dot and with the additional information that the vector d is computed as dg by d theta multiplied with theta dot. And based on that expression, we can assemble the full push forward rule. So the full push forward rule. And this one will be we propagate forward over our nonlinear solver here given by the function f, which takes the primal input theta as well as the tangent input theta dot and then computes first f of theta, so our primal solution, and then it does exactly what we described here. So it basically solves a linear system of equations. So what we have here is essentially the push forward operation. And so far, I always said that we have this primal pass with the theta star, and this gives us an x star. So essentially, this is indirectly what I wrote here with the input. So you have to think of it a little bit loosely. But there is still a really important open question because we have these additional derivatives here. So we have the derivative of g with respect to theta, as well as the derivative of g with respect to x. And here we can make usage of forward mode AD, because if we assume that our optimality criterion is differentiable, then these are just Jacobian vector products. So let me note that down. So given the optimality criterion is differentiable, then we know that dg by d theta multiplied with theta dot, which gave us the vector d, which we called here as the auxiliary vector, is just forward mode ad. So we kind of call back into our ad engine. It's a little bit more tricky for this one here, because this is not just an explicit operation, but it is another implicit constraint here. But when we, for instance, use iterative solvers, so for instance, conjugate gradient or GM rest methods, then we can also express these operations in terms of a matrix free implementation. And for this, we just need to define the vector multiplication. So let me note this down, the solution to the linear system. And the linear system was dg by dx multiplied with x dot is equal to minus d, can be solved with an iterative solver, so can be solved with an iterative solver and this one just needs matrix vector products so which just needs matrix vector products so matrix vector products and in numerical linear algebra this is called a matrix free solver so a um, matrix free solver and those can also be expressed as Jacobian vector products with forward mode and D. So this is the crucial insight. So these can be expressed using forward mode AD as Jacobian vector products or in other terminology, just push forward operations. Let me summarize this really quickly. So here we looked at the example of nonlinear system solving. So as said, this arises, for instance, with nonlinear partial differential equations or also in deep equilibrium models. The primal pass or forward pass is the solution to this nonlinear system of equation, employing a newton raphson scheme. Now you do not only want to solve the primal system, but you also want to forward propagate tangent information as part of forward mode automatic differentiation. And in order to do that, we need to be able to push forward tangent information on theta to x. And we didn't want to do this with an unrolling or piggybacking approach, but rather with an approach which employs the implicit function theorem.
And there we arrived that this is the solution to a linear system of equations. And that's a crucial emphasis that um, this requires a linear solve and not a nonlinear solve. Because typically part of the newton raphson scheme are multiple linear solves. So each iteration of a newton raphson scheme again calls linear solvers. And here we only need one linear solve. By this we also see that this most certainly will be way cheaper to do than the actual primal computation. And then we saw that these additional derivative operations, they can be implemented with the forward mode AD engine for which we want to provide this custom push forward operation. And here we saw that we then need a linear solver. So for instance, a conjugate gradient, a GMRS method, you name it. And a last important information that if we then need to evaluate these push forwards, these are the primal solutions from the primal pass. So these theta star and x star. So the dg by the theta is evaluated at theta star and x star and then multiplied with theta dot. So this is what your forward mode AD engine does. A big thanks to all the patrons of the channel. If you also want to support my vision of free education on these advanced mathematical topics, you will find the link to the Patreon page down in the video description. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, then please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel. There is more awesome content on automatic differentiation and how you can apply this for deep learning or for simulation topics. Here you will now see similar videos and I hope to see you in one of the next videos.